So let's have a look at an exemplar of the predicting trajectory lab. I want to refer to this page uh, several times as we're going through this. This is the form on how to write your lab report. Obviously, when you're writing your lab report, this is something you should be looking at. So if I just take a look at the top, which is the first thing I'm going to look for, uh, your cover page, title uh, of the report, your name, group names, and the date of submission. So here we've got a title, name of the author, and the group members' names. Uh, up at the top, you've got your date of submission. So those are all covered. Next thing we'll be looking for, in order, you've got your purpose, the equipment that you've used. These are gotten from the lab sheet and procedure. This is perfectly fine. Refer to the attached sheet. Just make sure that it is, in fact, attached at the end. This student has included a setup diagram, which shows quite clearly all of the equipment. Your ramp, it shows that this is where you're going to be calculating the velocity. Here's your overall height from the counter to the floor. Here's the bucket, which is labeled, even the height of the bucket, and then the new height, which would be from the top of the bucket to the top of the counter, and there's your range. We scroll down a little bit. This student has included the bitmap. Unfortunately, through scanning, it didn't come out all that well. They've explained, uh, sorry, for the diagram above, it says what this is. And down below it says figure two. Very brief explanation of what we're looking at, which is the three trials. The comment that I made, try to make this a little bit larger, which means when you're inserting it, make it slightly bigger than this student has actually done. It's very difficult to read this. And I know this is fuzzy. Uh, the original it was not much more clear than this, so it wasn't that easy to see. Next page, they're showing some calculations, very neatly labeled calculations. They're explaining what they're doing, solving for the velocity. They have written down the formula to find the average, which is taking their four individual velocities or speeds, dividing it by four. My comment right here, V is supposed to be lowercase. These are all capital, which is not correct. The problem with Microsoft Word, it automatically capitalizes that, so just be careful, make sure you go back and make it into lowercase. Um, and here we've got their final number now. There's a lot of significant digits, so we'll have to be careful when we go on into later calculations. Uh, this student has then taken the table format to list all of the variables, very easy to see. There's the X components, here's the Y components, then they're showing us the kinematic equation that they've picked. They've plugged in the numbers and they begin to do the solution. The only thing I didn't have in this report was once you've taken this number right here, they probably should have done some significant digits simply due to the fact that if we look up here you have three significant digits. They've written this as two. When you're measuring with a meter stick this is more than likely going to be three since you can go to a millimeter. So right here they should have written their final answer for time with three significant digits. On this page they're showing us the calculation for range they have included the components. They're calling it updated since they have now done some calculations. Here is the calculation for range, which is very neatly um, explained. The comment that was written down, how many sig digs should you go to? This person should have gone to three sig digs, simply because the smallest measurement we took was in fact three. They wrote some observations down, okay, letting us know that essentially it went into the bucket. Uh, for sources of error, they did do a little bit of a description. Uh, here is something that um, I still need. It does mention something to the effect of does the mass of the ball affect the calculations. Uh, this student doesn't mention anything. And even though they do have an error of 100 or sorry, 0%, which they show the calculation, they should still discuss, it's called possible sources of error. Why is it that we might not be able to get it into the bucket? And they give us a conclusion at the bottom, okay, which is exactly where it's supposed to be. I don't want to see the conclusion before calculations. So they explain what's going on in terms of the conclusion and they do include the lab sheet to show the procedure. The only thing the student forgot to do was to attach their rough work at the back. So all in all, 
this student did in fact a relatively good job of a lab report with a few minor things that can easily be fixed for next time.